So how this crazy project all got started was the owners of this historic building in downtown Portland called me and they said they had a very special project that consisted of a hundred year old flagpole. They found out I specialize in reclaimed wood furniture. So a few days later, I went down there. It's located on Southwest 5th and Alder and we're right in the heart of Southwest Portland, really near Pioneer Square and, and around us are these amazing historic buildings. Ornamental design, beautiful architecture, 15 stories tall, and um, I'm just in the midst of some beautiful history. So when we get to the roof, we notice a 100-year-old flagpole standing 60 feet tall, and it's pretty mesmerizing. This thing came from an old growth tree. It was quarter sawn, clear vertical grain, through and through, and the first knot was probably 40 feet up on this thing. When we're on the roof, we're looking at this beautiful cityscape. It's just a gorgeous city. And right there at the heart of Portland, there's some really amazing old structures that really, you know, sign in for the uniqueness of where we're at. I'm very lucky to be able to have the chance to use this material for furniture. It's the bee's knees of old growth forest. It's probably the best cut out of a log you can imagine. They just don't make this stuff anymore. At that time of the turn of century, to me, is such an awesome time and period where a lot of things were happening and the bridges were just now being built. And, you know, this flagpole has witnessed Portland go from Stumptown to Rip City. And damn if that's not cool. 100 years withstanding all that weather and just up there. And uh, now it's coming down. Hopefully I can make it into a piece of furniture that's going to last another 100 years or more. And that's a beautiful story to me. When I was doing some research on John Yan, I found out that he was a timber tycoon who made his money in Astoria. So he financed this whole building to be made in 1911. And it was all clad in terracotta. The lighting was just gorgeous. And I could just imagine it at that setting, you know, with the, the little buggies going by, dirt roads, and you know, the bridges are just now being built. So on this project, it took months of planning and preparation. And there was a much bigger mission involved where they used a 260 foot crane to move a 10,000 pound generator on top of the building. And they were removing condensers. And basically, it was supposed to happen on a Sunday. But I was called on Saturday afternoon. I'm at my shop and they were saying, it's gonna happen now. So I had to get my crew down there. I called Jason Messer, one of the finest arborists in this city. Anthony Roskovich, who's a wood species expert and also my shopmate here in Portland. And also Michael Redman and his two sons, who own Creative Woodworking Northwest, a woodworker's haven for anybody here in Portland. So the crew all got assembled and we had our hard hats on and we we're just hyped for this thing. And we got briefed and uh, went through a safety meeting. Um, you know, there was a lot going on that day and we were just such a small part. Um, we were just lucky to be there and watch what was going on. So we couldn't believe it. This crane was spanning the whole street. Its feet were planted on cribbing, which are like uh, cross-hatched Lincoln logs. And um, this thing was 260 feet tall with this jib added on. We got to watch that whole process. It's like one big hydraulic piston going all the way up just to make it that high. Wow. I mean, all of us were in awe and just couldn't believe the engineering behind this feat. It's just uh, amazing. What they did is they harnessed it from the base and the center, and the, the head foreman basically was cutting off the main supports with the torch. And while that was happening, the tension of it was taunt. And once the last cut was made, this thing jumped like four feet. And it blew everyone away because, I mean, when that last cut was made, it was swinging like crazy. It was really intense to watch, but the guys managed to bring it under control and they eased it to where the crane could lift it up and lower it down to the street. So up to that point, we were all just watching in awe this whole operation throughout the day. But when that flagpole was getting lowered, it was go time. Once it hit the ground, we got out our chainsaws. We had a thoughtful idea where we were gonna make our first cut so that we could move it and put it on the trailer, wrap up this job, and get out of there.
When it came down to tackling this project, there's no way I could have done this in my space. It's just much too tight and would have taken up the whole place. So I went to Mike Redman of Creative Woodworking Northwest, where he's got a really big shop and he's been doing this for 30 years. He's been instrumental in helping Against the Grain get where it is today. I would actually say he's probably been my mentor for the last four years and I really appreciate his help. Going into the design element of this piece, we were wondering how we were going to build it. So it was great to have Mike there to banter back and forth some ideas. And you know what the great part was, it wasn't his project, it wasn't my project, it was our project. And we both wanted the same thing for this piece, which was to let the wood speak for itself and to let the flagpole shine through in the finished product. And given the nature of what I do with Against the Grain, this is right up my alley. I'm always looking for the story behind Reclaimed Wood, and I love its history. It really doesn't get much better than that. We decided to take the base of the flagpole, which was a true 12 inch by 12 inch beam, and we threw it up into the resaw machine. We knew that we were going to make an amazing table out of this wood. As the pole was opening up, I was looking at some of the best wood I've ever seen in my life. I counted like 300 years in this first chunk of wood. And that was like in a 1,000 year old tree. And if you did the math, with that pole sitting up there for 100 years, that's like 1,100 years of just time capsulated into this wood. After we were done drooling over this wood, it was apparent to us that the table had just built itself. Mike and I were on the same page. We book matched it open and the table laid right there. We knew exactly how it was gonna look. There was still so much work left to do and coming up soon was the glue up. But Mike and I still had to clean up the sides on the jointer and the planks were easily 50 pounds, three inches thick. Mike's jointer had no problem ripping through it, but I think we had a problem moving them. When it came to the leg design, we wanted to keep the shape of the leg as organic as possible to the flagpole. So we wanted to use the rounds for legs and we wanted to let them represent where they were on the flagpole. So we sent them out to my friend Kevin Poost, who's a wood turner here in Portland, so he could clean them up. Hanging out in Poost's workshop is pretty cool. He has one bright light over his lathe so you can focus on what he's doing and you're left in the dark to watch basically a performance. He loves cleaning up the grain so that you can see all the beautiful intricacies of the wood. And he lets the wood speak for itself which is exactly what this project needed. But it was such a cool vibe to be able to sit back and watch the, the curling furls of all this wood just flying off and he's just chips in his face and he's just listening to classical music, just loving what he's doing. And it was cool to just be a part of it and to share this project with some of my friends. back at Creative Woodworking Northwest to throw the tabletop through the drum sander. I've seen hundreds of pieces of wood go through this sander, some of them single slabs as big as this one, but nothing speaks to me like this piece of wood. It's almost a history book coming out of the end of this drum sander. The drum sander just scratched the surface. Now it's time for me to meticulously sand this thing by hand which means I'm going to spend some quality time with it, really get to know it, all the nooks and crannies, exposing the grain patterns, getting in there so that the clear vertical grain just pops. I know when I put the finish on this thing, it's going to transform an already beautiful piece of wood into an epic piece of furniture that hopefully lasts another 100 years in the yawn building. After completing the flagpole project, I felt a huge sense of accomplishment. I have to thank the owners of the Yawn Building for contacting me and giving me the opportunity to work with such a beautiful piece of wood. The crew involved in removing this, this flagpole was just outstanding. 
Then all my friends that I got to involve in this project, I, they really helped me through this. A hundred years ago, Portland was going through a golden era of its own. And now, I'm reliving it a hundred years later in my own place and time. I really appreciate where I'm at, and the connection to this project has really solidified my bond to this city. And if I didn't already love this place enough, I feel just that much more connected. I can do it. Do you want to get done today? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Then we're done. He likes to. We're not done. Mm -hmm. No, we're not. We can be done in 15 minutes. I'm going to do it one more time. One more time.